the seminar you are about to enjoy is intense. CPU intense. Please ensure all other web browsers, Windows, and media-heavy programs are closed before participating. You may experience audio or video loss if running other programs. Thanks. Live from laboratories and living rooms across the country, this is AEOP Memberships Person to Person. Tonight, successfully navigating the job search with your hosts Jaheen Habib and Katie Schneider. Good evening, everybody. We hope this finds you well, and on behalf of AEOP, we want to give a warm welcome to everyone we have on the call with us tonight to this week's person-to-person -person session. My name is Jaheen Habib. And I'm Katie Schneider. Tonight on Person to Person, we'll discuss how to successfully navigate your job search. We know that searching for a job, especially when it can be your first one, is a very stressful experience. So we hope that through tonight's discussion, we can relieve a little bit of that stress for you. Before we get started, we'd like to introduce ourselves to Heath. Thanks, Katie. So what we are going to do is start off by introducing ourselves so you can learn a little bit more about myself and Katie and then open it up to you all for questions afterwards. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so um, again, my name is Jaheen Habib for folks who are just joining the call. We are going to go left to right here for the photos on your screen. Um, I'm originally from the Washington DC metro area and graduated uh, with a degree in electrical engineering from Virginia Tech back in 2016. I am also an AEOP alum from the summer 2015 term. I had a phenomenal experience with the College Qualified Leaders Program and eventually had my project published in the IEEE Journal and the square um, you see on your screen is an antenna that I designed during my internship. Um, a couple of fun facts. I love cars and I also had the awesome opportunity to meet Vince Cerf a couple years ago at a conference and um, he is the founder of the internet. So without him, we, wouldn't, um, we couldn't have been doing this seminar tonight. All right. Um, moving along to the next slide, we want to just share some of our high school activities because I know we have a few high schoolers with us in the audience tonight. So by way of background, as I mentioned before, I loved cars and math since I was a kid and um, my involvement in high school activities is where I really started to get interested in potentially pursuing a career in the engineering field. Um, I got into some programming courses and also took a few AP math and science courses, which further piqued my interest in those subjects. I was also involved in a number of organizations where I got to learn some leadership skills and also tutor underclassmen in different subjects where I further developed not only those students' skills, but also sharpened my own skills as well. And then fast forwarding to college. Um, I was initially debating between mechanical and electrical engineering, and I ended up deciding on um, electrical engineering since I really enjoyed circuits and solving puzzles, and also found that I really enjoyed um, a math course called differential equations, which is needed for the um, electrical engineering classes later on. In addition to schoolwork, I also got myself involved in some more college activities where I met so many phenomenal people. And this is also how I got introduced to the AEOP College Qualified Leaders Program. I am naturally an introvert, but my involvement in these organizations really helped me get out of my comfort zone. And I like to say that I'm now a trained extrovert. Um, in the pictures here in the middle, I am at the International IEEE Women in Engineering Conference. And on the right is a picture of me in my um, university's clean room for my senior design lab class, where we are doing some work for companies and their work with solar equipment. Um, so for my summer internships, I just want to talk about some of my experiences that I had um, throughout college. So my first internship with 
was with United Technologies Corporation. I was up in Connecticut for the summer where I helped um, assemble LCD units that were going to be installed in worldwide buildings such as um, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, um, the Sears Tower, and um, other high-rise buildings. And for those of you that are familiar with the Tower of Terror at Disney World, um, the LCD units in there were also designed um, by my team. Um, and that was an awesome experience, just getting some electric mechanical um, engineering skills um, in, my, in my belt. Um, another internship I had was with Accenture Federal Services. That was um, another program out of Washington, D.C., where I did more consulting work. So we helped upgrade um, and develop some digital products for their online websites and also their mobile apps. Um, and it was a pretty cool experience. That website that we helped with um, gets um, more than uh, around 4 million visitors each day, and we get about a billion dollars in revenue. And lastly, um, I wanted to talk about my experience with AEOP. Um, I think um, this was one of the most pivotal moments of my both academic and professional career. Um, this was a 10 week program in uh, Maryland and the research that I helped conduct during my internship eventually got published in IEEE, as I mentioned before. Um, I also had the opportunity to present this work to the International Radio Science Meeting in Colorado. And during that time, I had the honor of representing the um, United States National Committee. So as you can see, AEOP opened several doors for me, and I'm so grateful for that experience. I think um, my mentors and my project leads and the overall planning team really helped me um, get to where I am today. And um, they were really invested in my success and making sure that um, I had the best you know, experience and pointing me in the right direction um, for different opportunities. Um, going on to... The next slide, um, I just want to talk about how these um, programs influenced and helped um, shape my college career. I think um, I learned a lot of skills that not only were applicable in the classroom, but um, a lot of soft skills that um, you end up using in, you know, in your full time jobs after college. Um, I think the programs, uh, you know, motivated me to study harder and learned beyond what was being ta taught in the classroom and also um, get future um, interns um, excited about the program. Um, the research that we conducted was really cool. You get to interact with a lot of um, top researchers in the field, come out with um, great research results, and um, I also had the opportunity to confirm my full-time employment before I graduated college, so that was great. And. To wrap it up for my portion, um, some skills to succeed that I always like to include um, is the first one being go one step beyond what you think you can handle. I think this goes back to getting out of your comfort zone and really challenging yourself to see where you might end up, uh, whether it be on the path that you thought that you were going to be on or something completely new. Um, I think a lot of the time we're afraid to say yes or we're so focused on this path that we are, you know, so um, you know, focused on following, but sometimes um, an opportunity will come your way. And if you say yes, it might just be the best thing that happened. Um, so yeah, and then moving on to number two is focus on your own success. I think it's always so easy to see, um, you know, even in your school courses, like, oh, my friend got 100%, I got a 98. And it's so easy to just be like, you know, be down on yourself. But I think if you focus on your own success, and you're focusing on competing with yourself and doing better than what you were yesterday, I think that is self growth in itself. And that's, um, that's something that you should be uh, focused on. Number three is to do what you enjoy. Um, I think throughout life, um, you'll find what um, you enjoy spending your time on and what matters the most to you. Um, I think that a lot of the time we get so caught up in trying to do something to uh, maybe impress others or do it for, um, you know, some other cause. But I think at the end of the day, if you focus on what makes you happy, it'll make the most successful. Um, number four is just talking about how extracurriculars are really important. Um, I think I mentioned this earlier, 
um, when we were talking that, um, you know, in the classroom, you'll learn all the technical skills. You'll learn a lot about what the actual content is for a particular subject, but extracurriculars and your involvement in those clubs and organizations will teach you a lot of soft skills, such as communication, um, such as, you know, uh, learning different leadership skills, which are so important when you get out in the real world and you have to kind of figure those things out on your own. And lastly, is to be open to new opportunities. You never know where they're going to take you. Um, I think my whole college career was just being that yes woman, you know, saying yes to everything and anything that came my way. And I think that really um, helped shape where um, I currently am. Um, so with that, I think we um, have Katie's portion next. So Katie, I'll hand it off to you. Sounds good. Thanks, Shaheen. So before I introduce myself, as you guys can see, um, Shaheen, and as I will share shortly, we both have, you know, big histories and we've done a lot in high school all the way through college. And that's really what's led us to our careers today. And every little thing you do throughout all of those years of your schooling can really help you in your job search. So in sharing our own experiences, we just want to encourage you to really think about, um, <clears throat> as Jaheen said, exploring new things, but also finding what you're really interested in to help you along that journey. So um, again, I'm Katie Schneider. I just graduated from Colorado School of Mines with a master's degree in mechanical engineering, and I have a bachelor's degree in engineering physics. Um, I'll talk about my internship shortly, but um, I'll start off with the fact that I participated in the JSHS program, the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium, as a part of AEOP when I was in high school. And that really was something that kicked me off um, into my science career. So in high school, I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I really was passionate about science and math, um, but I liked other things. I really liked writing. And so I really tried to explore all of this through different things like speech and debate, um, the local science fair and things like that. So I took AP STEM and humanities courses. Um, but as I just said, competing in the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium was what really, really solidified that that's what I wanted to focus on moving forward. Um, not only did that competition open me up to a lot of science careers, but it gave me the confidence to, to want to pursue them and to know that I could pursue them. So once I got into college um, studying physics, I really wanted to focus on activities. I mean, I wanted to do it all. I really wanted to be involved in every club I could and meet as many students as I could. Um, but I, I also wanted to focus on what I knew would put me on, on a path for a career I was really interested in. Uh, so one of the biggest things that impacted my career search was the Society of Women Engineers, and then a smaller offshoot of that was the Society of Women in Physics. Um, so having that group really championed, we, we were able to champion each other in finding what we wanted to do, and having that support system was really helpful, um, not only in classes, but when applying to jobs, you had this network of people who could help you uh, read your resume and go over your resume with you, um, practice job interviews and things like that. Um, so those girls really helped me through college and I'm, I'm still in touch with today. Um, on top of that, you know, we all ended up in different careers. So now I have friends in the engineering field in civil engineering and mechanical and physics and electrical and all over the spectrum who I can reach out to and continue to build those connections with in case I want to do something else someday. Um, I also joined the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. I knew I was very interested in aerospace engineering and this gave me this opened so many doors and, and showed me so many new experiences. Um, and then finally, the biggest thing that I focused on in college was um, the Solar Decathlon. And briefly, the Solar Decathlon is an international competition where teams design and build full-sized solar-powered homes. Um, and my team ended up doing so in Morocco. So not only did I get an international experience out of it, but I had to learn a whole new realm of, of different engineering in a different country. Um, so all these things are to show that I was I, I did many different things in college and my interests were very scattered. Um, so when it came and that's that's not a bad thing, but when it came to searching for a job my junior and senior year, um, I looked back on those experiences to really figure out what I actually wanted to do and what I truly enjoyed. Um, so for example, while the Solar Decathlon project, I mean, I learned more about Windows than I ever thought I would ever care to know about. And while um, learning about that solar energy and how to build a house was incredibly exciting for me and a passion. I knew it wasn't something that I wanted to be a full on career. Uh, whereas the things I did in this aerospace group were very, very exciting. And that was something that I wanted to pursue further in a career. So all of these things really um, helped me grow, you know, soft skills and engineering skills, but also just discover my interests more. 
Um, so throughout those college programs, I had several internships and the first was at Los Alamos National Laboratories. So very interesting. I got to work on a lot of different physics projects. Um, and, you know, the thought of having an internship is, is that it could open a door for a full time job after college, which is an amazing thing. And and all of all the things we're seeing here um, and the, the skills you can use to apply to a job and the techniques you can use apply for internships as well. Um, and of course, those internships can can become a full time job or add to your resume in that sense. Um, but not every internship has to be incredibly positive. So, for example, Los Alamos was an incredible job. I loved it. It was inspiring. I got to do things I never thought I would be able to work on as, as a college student. Um, but it did teach me that I didn't want to work in a lab setting. I knew that it wasn't fit for me. I liked having more of a, an office setting, in all honesty, and working um, on, in the industry rather than in the national lab. So great experience. but a positive of that was that it taught me that that might not be what I wanted to pursue. Um, and then I decided to apply for an industry job at Sierra Nevada Corporation, which is a, an aerospace company here in Denver. And um, that was exactly what I had had thought was missing at Los Alamos. It was a different work environment. It was a bit faster paced. Um, I was still working on airplanes, which throughout this whole, this whole process was something I was really interested in. Um, but I knew that was more, more up my alley. So when I was um, searching for jobs my junior and senior year, I applied to a lot of aerospace companies knowing what to expect and that I, I actually liked that industry a lot. So um, again, for me, this kind of went back to, this all started with AEOP for me in that I gained a lot of confidence and experience through the JSHS program. Um, it did open up a lot of job opportunities for me in new industries. I didn't even know engineering physics existed before participating in JSHS, um, but I learned that that was sort of an applied physics job. So while I loved researching quantum mechanics and the Schrodinger's cat experiment, um, I learned how I could, through a AEOP, how I could apply that to an actual engineering position. Um, and I also learned what day-to-day -day engineering was like. It was wonderful to sit down in that experience and all through college with real engineers who could tell me, yeah, every day, you know, I spent a lot of time writing more than you would think. You know, as an engineer, I think, um, I know, at least I did when I was younger, I pictured people in lab coats working on experiments all day or building parts and putting things together, but it's actually a lot of writing and a lot of research and a lot of these other things that may not sound so glamorous, but they're an essential part of engineering. Um, and learning what that was like as through my job search and before my job search was really helpful in kind of tailoring what I wanted to write about and what I wanted to work on. Um, again, it was also really helpful in building a network with industry professionals, mentors, and colleagues. So back to the example of the Society of Women Engineers, I met a lot of friends, but those friends, you know, are now colleagues who work in at different companies and some of them even the same company. So um, it helps you really, you're not, you, one, you're not alone and you have friends going through the same thing. You have siblings going through the same thing, um, but also a lot of those people can become mentors. So I talked to, um, when I was a, a sophomore in high school, we had the opportunity to mentor an incoming freshman. And um, I, the, the freshman I, in, I mentored, her name was Lucy, and she actually joined that solar decathlon project with me, the house building competition. And um, because of joining that, she actually decided to become a civil engineer and now she works at a civil engineering firm. So it's, it's really great to meet people and to interact and you never know where those opportunities or interests can come up. Um, also, on that note, um, engineers and, and professionals love to hire good people. So if you make connections with people already in careers and you can get a reference or a referral from them, um, they want that. So don't be shy. You know, be, you want to stay professional, but don't be shy in trying to reach out to people and make connections while you're still in school. Um, as Jaheen, I also received a full-time employment opportunities before graduating college, which was um, definitely weight off my shoulders, especially in the current climate. So um, I would say on that note, you know, it's not too early to look and you, if you build those connections early and you, you know, you make a good impression and you fit well with them and they fit well with your interests, um, there's always that chance to look forward to. So definitely put yourself out there early, even if it's, it's a bit early to be applying for jobs. Um, and then secondly, for me, while I did these things, through college, I started to learn about the work-life balance. So having an internship and these different experiences as a, as, a, as a college student, and even doing things like that in high school, doing, um, you know, even if you participate in an AEOP program in high school, 
it's not a full-time job, but you still have to learn how to balance that with your schoolwork and also how to balance that with your social life and things like that. So um, knowing that with each different position I had in college and each group I was in really showed me the work-life balance of different careers. And, you know, for example, working at a national lab versus an industry job, they might have very different pictures of that. Um, so just something to focus on that I, I didn't focus on too much going into it, but once I started to have internships, I realized that was a really important element to, to searching for a job. So now a couple of my tips on your actual job search and um, ways to be successful in that. So I know Jaheen and I have spent a lot of time talking about our own experiences, and we really want to open this up um, in a minute to questions and, and kind of just learn what you guys would like to hear more about and things like that. But um, you know, I think I think one of the things about a job search is you sort of have to jump into it and learn what works for you and what doesn't. So in my pa in my um, experience, I found that my path is very nonlinear. So I started off saying I had a lot of interest, didn't know if I wanted to do science or humanities, and then I ended up picking physics, and I did that through college. Um, and I was in all of those different organizations from aerospace to solar power, and things like that. And despite that seeming, you know, okay, it's all STEM related, sure. Um, well, when I graduated, I realized I did not want to do a traditional engineering career. I loved my internship at Sierra Nevada Corporation, but the day to day just wasn't as fulfilling as I wanted it to be. So when I started my job search, I actually, um, I, I literally Googled non-traditional engineering careers and found a lot of different things that I hadn't even heard of before. Um, and what I ended up doing, choosing and what I'm doing now is patent law. So I, I'm a patent engineer and I write, um, patents down for engineers and help them translate that to a legal team. And, and I love it. I get to do research. I learn about crazy cool science every day, but um, my role is to communicate that with, with an outside audience. And that's what I really enjoy doing. So despite having a physics and engineering degree, I, again, I write a lot and I, I do things that people wouldn't necessarily associate with it. And I never in a million years would have grown up saying, I'm going to be a patent engineer. Um, but now that I am, I love it. And um, again, you just never know what could come up. Um, one of the things that really helped me was identifying my strengths to help guide my job search. So identifying that I did like to write and that I did like to did, did like science communication and was good at it um, helped me find that more non-traditional career. So if you can identify your strengths, you know, think about technical things. Are you great at electrical engineering? Do you like putting circuits together or do you like to tinker on cars? Um, do you love coding? You know, I have friends who love coding in their free time, and that can really help guide your job search. Um, but also think about your your soft skill strengths. So, are you do you like public speaking, or you would would you prefer to be more behind the scenes? Um, do you do you like you know meeting with clients and things like that, or would you rather sit at you know at your desk and work on CAD all day? So there are a lot of different things, but um, I think identifying what you're what you're good at and what really makes you feel fulfilled can help you with your search. Um, again, seek advice from your from your network of people, your career coaches, mentors, and professors. I, When I started thinking about patent law, I called as many people as I could who I knew were in that position or had connections because I didn't know what it even entailed. And I wanted to make sure I was making an informed decision. But um, you know, along with advice, you just might have to ask these people questions and do some research on what their jobs are like every day. And, how they got their jobs and how their career path went and things like that. Because um, again, everyone's job search is different and you'll have to sort of find what works for you. But people who have been through this before have a lot of experience and um, can surely lend some advice. Um, again, consider non-traditional STEM careers. Um, you know, I stumbled upon patent engineering. There's also um, science journalism, um, different things like that, that that can really be interesting in the STEM field. And then finally, know that your job is not forever. So when I decided on my internship path of aerospace engineering, that was it for me. I was going to work in airplanes forever. But then, you know, it, it was hard to kind of detach from that when I realized it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. It was hard to detach. You know, I'd spent five years in college just for this, and I had grown up thinking I was going to be an engineer, and, and I still am. Um, but those positions are not one, they don't define you, and two, they don't last forever. So, you know, if you, not to say that you want to switch your job every six months, but if you find something that's not the right fit, or if your first job, especially your first job, isn't exactly what you wanted, that's okay. And learn lessons from it and grow from it and gain experience, and then you can move on. 
Um, but, but, you know, definitely don't take any opportunities for granted while also acknowledging that um, you can still change and, and be where you would like to be. So um, finally, these are, these are more reiterations of what I've said, but um, just a few more big points. Um, when you are searching for a job, if you've narrowed down maybe the field you want to be in, but you're looking at specific companies, realize that not only did they need to interview you and, and choose you for that job, but you need to be a good fit for them or they need to be a good fit for you as well. So if maybe the work-life balance culture at that company isn't what you're looking for, but the work is, you might want to consider another option. Um, as Jaheen said, think outside the box on what companies and, and definitely don't check anything off your list right away. You never know what opportunities will come. Um, and then maintain a positive attitude through it. Um, job searching is very stressful and very hard work. Um, I, you know, I'm sure there could possibly be people on this call who are either entering college right now or, or exiting college. Um, and again, this is a very difficult climate we're, we're moving on into right now, and we don't know what's gonna happen in the next two months, let alone a year. So um, just keep, try to keep a positive attitude and, and know that an opportunity could come up you know, in a split second without expecting it. And um, just try to maintain, you know, the fact that something will work out and it may not be perfect right away and it may not come right away, but as long as you keep trying, you're, you're not gonna get anything if you don't try. So if you keep applying and you keep getting your name out there, someone will find you and um, you will you'll find your good fit. So with that, uh, we'd like to open up the evening to questions from our audience. So if you have a question, you can send it to us in the chat room on the right side of your screen. Um, and again, we just want this to be a real open discussion and, and hear from you what you would like to hear from us. So thank you. Thanks, Katie. You brought up some great points. And I think, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll monitor the chat window. And if, as Katie said, if you have any questions, please um, send them in and we will get to each one of them um, as much as we can with the time that we have. So I think we have um, our first question in and um, it was regarding, um, I think it was my work with IEEE Women in Engineering and how did that um, help with my career. So uh, what I'll start off by saying is that, um, you know, engineering is already a pretty limited field in terms of um, women being represented. Um, I think the, um, male to female ratio is pretty jarring across different universities across the US. And um, at my school, the um, electrical and computer engineering program was even more so. So I think um, in the beginning, I would notice that I was maybe one of three girls in my classes out of 60. And um, I felt that I couldn't, you know, if I didn't show up to class one day, my teacher would automatically realize that, oh, like, where is Jean today? Um, so, you know, I, I really felt that I was one of the only women um, in my course and in my department. And so I think by getting involved in IEEE and the Women in Engineering chapter itself, it helped me find a network of women that I could be like, oh, OK, I'm not the only one that's here. I have other people that I can lean on and um, realize that, you know, I'm not the only one here. And I think with that, um, having males in the IEEE Women in Engineering program is also just as important because, um, you know, without their support, you know, we really wouldn't be where we are today. So um, I think getting involved in that program and um, staying motivated um, really helped me finish out the program and also continue my involvement with them today. Okay, so the next question is, do you think that doing a lot of different things was a good thing in helping you boil down what you wanted to do? So Jaheen, you can add on to this one as well. Um, for me, I think it, it really was important. I'm someone who is a bit indecisive in all honesty, and I wanted to explore everything that was out there. Um, my biggest challenge originally in college was deciding between um, like a lab job or an industry job. So a lot of times in physics, um, in my specific case, when you get a physics degree, you know, a lot of people go on to get a PhD and you do a lot of research and, um, or, or become a professor. And again, those, I wanted to explore that option. And once I did at Los Alamos National Labs, I realized it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. So then jumping to an industry job and testing the waters there was really helpful for me and beneficial in the end. Um, and then, of course, once I had figured that out, that's when I started to delve into different clubs on campus, doing the, the aerospace, the solar powered, the, the women engineering, um, th different things like that. 
And again, it, it to me, it was helpful because it opened up a lot of doors and met a lot of different people and um, was able to really make an informed decision on what I wanted to do. I think if I would have, um, you know, Los Alamos was an incredible opportunity. And I, 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 you know, I know a lot of students who would have really, really loved that job and would have um, done anything to have that chance. And so I didn't want to take advantage of it. But but given the opportunity, I really did want to try it out and make sure it was a good thing. So um, yeah, in my case, it was helpful. Jaheen, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, I was just going to say that I think this also goes back to our childhood, right? We take so many different classes when we're in elementary school. We try so many different sports, instruments, whatever it is, to see what it is that we like. And I think it's just as important to try out those new things in high school or college or even in your adult life to see what it is that you want to focus your time on. Definitely. And again, don't think that that needs to be forever. You can still, I mean, even today I have different interests than my day-to-day -day job. Um, so yeah, don't, don't pinhole yourself into one specific thing. Um, so another quick question is, what's the difference between patent law and patent engineering? And I apologize for not specifying that earlier. So um, patent law or, or what a patent attorney does is, um, well, so I'll start with the general, what a patent agent and a patent attorney do is essentially when an engineer or an inventor or scientist has something they would like to patent, they send it to us and they say, can you write this into a formal legal patent? So basically our job there is to translate um, the scientists or inventors work into a legal document that says, this is what the invention is, this is um, how it's different from things existing and things like that. And then we send it um, to, to the US Patent Office in Washington, DC to get um, a full legal patent. So the only difference between a patent attorney or a patent lawyer and a patent engineer is that a patent attorney has a law degree as well, so they can provide legal advice. Where I have an engineering degree, so I can only do the engineering side of it. And for example, I wouldn't be able to represent our client in court. Um, but at, at the end of the day, it still boils down to um, understanding the, the engineering behind that invention. Yeah. Thanks, Katie. Our next question is, do you have to know what you want to do for a career before you go to college? And I think we can both answer this too. Um, I can start us off by saying that you absolutely do not need to know what you want to do before you go into college. Um, I think Katie and I, we both um, studied certain uh, subjects in school, but we took a completely different route in our professional careers. And with that, um, I think Katie, you've done a great job mentioning that, um, you know, this is not going to be your permanent job once you get out of school. And I think what I'll add on to that is saying that your um, career is so long. You have plenty of time to reinvent yourself several times to see what it is that you truly want to do. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, I think, you know, an example would be if you know you want to do science and engineering, but you don't know a specific field yet, whether it's mechanical, electrical, maybe you do pick a college that has a good or a, a strong engineering school over other things. But if you don't know at all, you might want to pick a larger school that has both humanities and science um, degrees you can take. So I don't think you have to know. And I definitely did it. <laughs> yeah, agreed. And I think a lot of people, even in their adult life, you know, they get into one field or one industry and they realize that it's not for them. And there are so many people that are continuously switching and seeking out different programs. So um, I think a lot of kids, including myself, I felt a lot of pressure to kind of have it all figured out in the beginning. But um, I think that's the beauty of life, right? You take every day, um, one day at a time and figure out what it is that you value, what it is that makes you happy and just go for that. Yeah, that's great. So our next question is, what do you see the role of international experience is in the job search and how does it help? That's a very interesting question. Um, so I personally did not have, so I did, I did not study abroad when I was in, in college. Um, and I, I did go, as I mentioned, I did travel to Morocco for that project my senior year in college, but I had already, um, I had already accepted a job before that. So it didn't actually play into my resume or anything like that. Um, so for me personally, it actually didn't have an experience or it didn't have an impact. Um, I knew I didn't want to go overseas for school or a job once I'd graduated, um, but I have a lot of friends who can't wait to do that. One of my good friends just got into a graduate program in Portugal. So um, I think it really just depends on, on if you want to be an international student and want to leave and travel and do things like that. Um, but in terms of getting a job, I don't think, unless it's, unless it's, um, 
country specific or international specific, I don't think it, having international experience would be required. Shaheen, do you have experience with that? Yeah, um, I also um, did not do any international programs while I was in school, um, but I did have a couple of friends that um, did some international programs, whether it be like a freshman experience type thing or they took some courses abroad. Um, and I think it, you know, going back to what you said, I don't think um, it makes a huge difference. It's really up to you if you want that experience um, in terms of traveling, or um, maybe you took a language in high school and you want to travel to that country and kind of practice it. Um, or if you're doing a specific minor or major in college and it applies to your program, definitely go for it. Um, but in terms of the job search, I would agree with you, Katie. I think it's really more of you know, your network and um, what it is that you want to do and um, all that tied in together. Mm-hmm. All right, so our next question um, is, I think, geared towards uh, my experience. And it says, I'm really interested in your work with Disney. What did you do and how cool was that? Um, So I think during my presentation, I mentioned earlier that um, I had an internship with United Technologies Corporation and we helped um, create some LCD units that go inside elevators. So um, I'll get a little technical here and explain that um, in the traditional elevators that we've probably seen growing up, they are the seven segment LEDs. So it kind of looks like a digital clock on um, based off like which floor you're on. So um, different elevator companies are replacing those seven segment LEDs with LCD units. So it kind of looks like a TV and you have a nice background, you have different um, colors on the screen. And so one of the um, one of my like clients, I would say that we helped develop these units for was um, for Disney World's Tower of Terror. And it was awesome. Um, It was, you know, just knowing that that was one of our clients. And um, other than that, the LCD unit preparation was the same as any other um, LCD unit. But it was just cool to know that, um, you know, the work that we were doing was going to be going somewhere that I had been. That's awesome. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) All right, so another question is, what is the best way to search for, apply for, and obtain internships in this field? Are most paid or unpaid? And do many people get hired from internships? So all of these are great questions. Um, So I'll start with the first one. What's the best way to search for and apply for internships in the field? So depending on what school you go to, a lot of schools have really, really um, great career centers that can help you find jobs, whether it be through a job fair or an online portal or things like that. So um, I would say that one, look, go to your school and try to find any resource you can and see if they can help you get internships. Um, another way is just to Google yourself. Most companies, when they, they'll have, um, you know, big kind of like right after the first school semester starts, at least in my experience, um, sort of like the March, February, March timeframe, a little bit before graduation. And then again in the fall are two really big hiring periods. So, um, you know, I would say start to Google kind of around those times and search for internships yourself. Um, I think, you know, you want to apply for them just like you would apply for a full time job. So be really serious about your resume and about your references and things like that. And um, if it comes down to having an interview, just be yourself and explain, you know, why this is interesting to you, why you think you'll be a good fit for this company. And then don't be afraid to ask them questions too, and make sure um, showing interest in a company in that way, asking questions things like that, following up with your interviews, thanking them is a really shows that you really, really care and stands out to inter, um, to uh, um, to uh, people hiring you, definitely. Um, are most paid or unpaid? So in my experience, all of my internships have, have been paid and most of the people I know in the STEM field are as well. Uh, you know, definitely that there's a huge range in what payment you can get. And as a student, I was happy with anything I could get. Um, and it, it, but it did feel good to, to be paid for my work. So um, yeah, in my experience, they've all been paid. I know there are unpaid internships out there. And um, you know there are a lot of opportunities you might be able to get at your university, for example, if you don't get an industry or, a, or um, an outside internship, a lot of schools will have lab work and things you can do over the summer as well. And whether those are paid or unpaid, I would say any opportunity you can get, um, I would definitely encourage taking it if it's interesting to you. And then finally, do many people get hired from internships um, into full-time jobs? So my, so Sierra Nevada Corporation, where I interned for two summers, they had um, a goal of 100% turnover from interns to employees. 
And, you know, of course, they didn't meet that, not because of the company's fault, but because people found other interests after their internships or moved away or things like that. But um, a lot of companies I know, they, they structure their intern program on training you and getting you interested in the company so that you do want to work for them in the future. So I think there's a huge, huge, huge opportunity in an internship to get full time employment out of it. Jaheen, do you have anything to add? Yeah, um, I just wanted to add that um, I think in addition to searching for um, your internship opportunities or even your full time, um, I think definitely take advantage of the resources that you already have, right? Your informal mentors, your mentors in your classes and at your universities, and also take advantage of your um, your department's advisors. A lot of the time, they're very well connected with different company representatives or um, recruitment coordinators, so they may also have some additional information on um, roles or positions that are open. Um, my internships were also all paid, um, and I was very lucky for that, but I also know that um, there are some internships that are unpaid, and I would definitely encourage everybody not to be deterred by that. I think um, while getting paid is very, very nice, I think um, at the end of the day, your experience is what really will carry you through into your full-time job search. Um, so definitely take advantage of any opportunity that you get. Um, and if you get paid, that's a, that's a plus. Let's see. All right. So how do you think AEOP helped you get employment offers before you finished your program? So um, I think this is a bit of a multifaceted answer. So first, I think it was just a great resume builder. I even to this day, so I participated in um, Junior Science and Humanities Symposium when I was a junior and senior in high school. So those were years ago, five years ago. Um, I still have them on my resume because I was able to get papers and presentations conferences out of them. And those are those are awesome and, and they mean a lot. I mean, JFHS is a very, very prestigious program and it was recognized by employers. So um, one, I was able to put that on my resume. Now that I'm an ambassador and on um, the alumni council, I can also have that on my resume. So I, being involved in AEOP and giving back to this program and trying to support um, other students in STEM is also a great thing to have. Um, and then again, I think just going through the experience, I learned so many leadership skills. You know, I attended conferences like this when I was in high school. Um, so many panels on searching for jobs and um, how to apply for jobs, how to apply for internships, just general knowledge of what an engineer does. I have gone to so many of these talks um, as a student in the AEOP that I kind of knew, I felt confident going into the job search. I kind of felt like I had an edge up on other students who might not have had this opportunity. Um, and maybe that could have helped, you know, my confidence in interviews and things like that. So yeah, I do think uh, it definitely helped me get those offers earlier than other students might have. Yeah, I think it all ties in together, right? The experiences that we have over the summers with AEOP, um, whether it be the technical skills that we learned or the soft skills that we learned, we all took that back to our schools and you know applied it in the classroom, applied it in our job searches. Um, for example, my experience with um, AEOP SQL program, um, you know, government contractors are reaching out to me, different labs are reaching out to me because it was such a broad area. Um, I think it really opened a lot of different doors for um, my career path. And I think, you know, without it, we wouldn't be where we are today. Yeah. All right. Our next question is, do you think it matters what college you choose to get a STEM degree from? That is actually a really good question because there are so many schools out there and it can be really overwhelming to, to be like, okay, do I want to go here? Do I want to go to a larger school? Do I want to go to a smaller school? I would say just thinking out loud, um, depending on what you want to do, like for example, with engineering, um, I think you want to make sure that your school that you pick is accredited um, because I think that will largely influence, um, you know, what job you get into. Some traditional engineering jobs, they want to make sure that um, your university and the curriculum that you got from that program was accredited and um, all of that. Um, I think in addition to, um, you know, all the official things, you wanna make sure that you feel comfortable at the school. Definitely do some college visits, take advantage of your spring break and you know go on a road trip, um, check out the university, see what the campus li life is like because that will largely also influence the experience that you have there. Um, the students that you interact with, the teachers, um, the food, there are so many different factors that can um, influence which school you pick. Um, Katie? Yeah, no, that's all so true. And I will um, encourage all of you to check out 
um, as a person to person seminar we did several weeks ago that was about navigating the college application process. So um, myself and my colleague Melissa spoke a lot about how we chose our colleges and things to look out for. And we had a special guest professor as well who gave um, her advice from the um, admission side of things. So that would be a great one to look at if you're at that point in your career. Um, all right, so what is the most important step in figuring out what career path you want to take? That is a very good question. Um, I think I think it really depends on your personal your goals and what you um, what you think is most important. And I know that kind of sounds like a an, a washed over answer, but um, for me, it was it was finding a job that I would be fulfilled with every day. That I would I would wake up excited to go to and come home feeling glad I went there that day. And I know that sounds like a, a an open answer or an open ended answer, but um, Again, for me, it wasn't about specifically what field I was in or how I was using my degree. It was I, what, what I knew would make me happy every day. So even though I pictured myself every day growing up and tinkering on an airplane or a car in my everyday career, it turned out that I'm, believe it or not, more interested in writing about other people's inventions and sharing those with the world. So um, I think just, just nailing down what it is you care about and... Um, and, and that to me was the important step in figuring out, okay, exactly what I want to do. Um, a bit of a more concrete answer that I can think of is maybe identifying your strengths. So if you're totally on track with something, you know exactly what you want to do, that's amazing. And I think you should run with it. But if you're more like I was and you're not quite sure and you're kind of hesitant to jump into something that feels so permanent, like such a big step, um, I would say sit down and identify your strengths. There are a lot of strength finders online. Um, Gallup poll has, is a really good one that I actually did. And it identifies there's like 400 strengths you can pick, you know, it, it helps you sift through and identifies your top five. And then it gives you career suggestions. And honestly, that that really helped me figure out what I was suited for and what, you know, your strengths are aligned with what you enjoy doing every day. So that helped me realize, okay, maybe this doesn't sound quite like something I would pick right away, but all the signs are leading me toward maybe this is something I would like. So that's what I would say. Yeah, I would agree with all of that. Um, I would say that, you know, throughout my internships, that kind of um, helped me figure out which direction I wanted to go in. I realized that um, I really, you know, vibe off of other people's energy. And I like having um, to work at a company that has great company culture. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we're spending so much time at work and, you um, you know, you want to be working with a team that cares about you, that values your work, that appreciates what you do. And when I when it came to deciding um, what I wanted to do for my full time job after college, um, I chose to, you know, work for a company that, um, you know, really cares about its people. Um, and with that, I think I've been really lucky because. Um, you know, I work for a team where I enjoy going to work every single day. Um, I don't really look at the clock when I'm at work. I feel like I'm going in to, you know, be with my friends and my colleagues and, you know, get the work done and have so many different perspectives come together to make one great solution. So um, to me, that's what I valued a lot, working with um, great people. And with that, um, you know, I really initially I thought, you know, I was going to be in this in the power industry or electronics in industry. And um, what I've realized through college is that, um, you know, the people that I work with is more important than what I'm actually doing. All right. Our next question is, how did your antenna design improve antenna science? That's a great question. So um, the research that I helped um, AEOP um, do in back in 2015. So it was a um, brand new project. It um, has never been researched before or anything like that. Um, so it was really cool to be a part of the U.S. national team in terms of helping, um, you know, research different facets of the project and also come up with different simulations, um, measure different dielectric materials and a couple other technical terms um, that I won't get too much into today. But if you all are interested in learning um, more about that, um, I think if you just Google Jaheen Habib and um, look up AEOP, um, you should be able to find the research paper there.
So it looks like we have one more quick question. Jaheen, what company do you work for? <laughs> I am currently um, at a cons technology consulting firm in Washington, D.C. Um, I love it a lot. And um, I actually ended up deciding to move back to the area that I grew up in. Um, initially, I thought that I was going to, you know, move all the way to the West Coast and, um, you know, I kind of said like bye to my mom and dad, but throughout college, I kind of realized that I really enjoy being around my family and, um, you know, being around my siblings is really important to me. So um, that also heavily weighed in on me coming back to the Washington, D.C. area. All and, right. Um, I myself, I work for... Um, so my internship was at Sierra Nevada Corporation, an aerospace company, and then for patent engineering, I work at a law firm called Holland and Hart. All right. Well, Jaheen, I think that wraps it up. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Um, if anyone has any last thoughts or questions or any comments that you want to make, um, please uh, include those. Um, otherwise, I think we are good to wrap up. So if you guys have any additional questions about AEOP, um, please feel free to visit our website at www.usaeop.com. Um, I'm Katie Schneider. Thank you guys so much for joining in tonight. I hope you stay healthy and safe. Um, Jaheen, you have any last, last ending words? Yeah, um, just thanks so much um, everyone for joining and we are so happy that you all were able to um, join us tonight and um, we definitely invite you all to tune into um, our next person to person session. Thanks everybody. Good night. Good night. Miss an exciting episode of person to person? Can't make our live broadcasts? Why not subscribe to AEOP Membership's YouTube channel and never miss an episode again? Thanks for watching, and tune in two weeks from now for the next exciting episode of Person to Person. Thanks for watching. For more information on Army Educational Outreach Program opportunities in your area, please visit www.usaeop.com.